Hey, Randy, how's it going? It's good to have you back on the show. It's going well, Sam. How are you doing today? Doing well, yeah. Good. So today, all about paste and fluid dispensers. So, Randy, would you mind telling us what exactly a fluid dispenser is and why someone might want to use one? So a fluid dispenser can really dispense any type of fluid from, assume you have vacuum pullback, which all of our units do. You can dispense something as thin as water or as thick as a solder paste, for example. So customers are using kind of a full range. You can do liquid adhesives, epoxies, solder paste, anything down, even water or solvent or um, anything really you can put into a syringe. Well, the vacuum just pulls the liquid back from coming out of the syringe tip. Correct. So if, if you have something really thin like water and you fill the syringe up with water, um, if it tends to drip, drip on its own, then you would put vacuum in on it and you turn the vacuum on just enough so the dripping stops. So the water or whatever solution you have in the syringe stops dripping. You don't want to go too high and have it stop bubbling when you're pulling too much vacuum. So it's a kind of a sensitive adjustment. So is it just a valve or a potentiometer that you're adjusting for that? It, it's a valve. So it's a mechanical vacuum it's putting on. Okay. And it cr creates the vacuum. It's not a vacuum pump in the dispenser. It creates a vacuum by uh, through running compressed air through a venturi and it creates a vacuum that way. So it's a pretty simple device. And so like, what are the most common things other than paste that you would find people using them for? So the, I'd say the two most common things would be solder paste and epoxies. Um, most people use a single part epoxy, which will have a, you know, a pot life of say 30 minutes to an hour or two hours. Uh, some people use a two part epoxy, which usually has shorter pot lives. Now pot life is the time after you finish mixing before the epoxy gets too hard to dispense. So pot lives can be 15 minutes up to, you know, hours or, you know, something like that, depending on the manufacturer's guidelines and how the epoxy is made. So those would be the kind of the main applications, paste and epoxies. Some people will dispense solvents. Um, flux also is a common application um, for a, a fluid dispenser. Okay, and you, you mentioned water before. What kind of application would you normally need to dispense something like that for? Is that just an example? Uh, let's say you want to do some cooling of a part you soldered and you don't want to wait for the um, solder to cool on its own or you're brazing something and you may want to dispense a little water on it. You can do that with a syringe versus dumping the whole product underwater, which could damage other parts on it. Okay. That, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. It's not that common, but you know, people have done it. So how, um, how long has paste dispensers been in the manufacturing kind of industry? Uh, probably since the mid 1980s or so. Um, we designed ours, um, I'd say in the late 80s. There was some on the market um, that were kind of higher cost. We came in with a lower cost with all the same features. So it was probably the late 80s when we uh, designed them and started manufacturing them ourselves. At the time, we started out with one model, which is, was just a pneumatic only with no timing, no electricity. Then we added a second model with just a timer um, and a valve versus the pneumatic one, which is just a foot valve. And then third model we designed was we saw the need for the vacuum pullback with thinner materials. So we added vacuum to that. Um, and those were the, the three models we started out with. So the first three models were completely analog, right? That's correct. And then we added a fourth model, which had a digital display and allow you to set the time in 
seconds. You can adjust the decimal point and get it more repeatable. So there was a need, especially in the jewelry industry, to control the amount of paste you're putting on when you're putting gold and silver solder paste on. And you don't want to put too much on because it's very expensive. And it's also more to clean up and grind off if you put too much on. So that's why we came up with a, a fourth model, which is digital. Yeah, so it's much more precise. Correct. It's, it's precise and more, it's repeatable. More repeatable. Because if from one day to the next, if someone had turned the adjusting knob on the analog one, it'd be hard to find that same exact spot. Whereas in the digital one, you can pop it back on and it's set where it was set, or you can write down the setting for a specific... The market with a Sharpie. Yeah. Line, make a little line. Right, exactly. Yeah, believe plenty of people did it that way. Uh, on the analog ones. Sounds like we were making these kind of in the very beginning. Um, what motivated you to actually design and build your own? Um, our jewelry customers really were the driving force. Um, they want something that was lower cost that they could use because they could have, you know, 20, 30, 40 workers on a, a line and to buy a seven or $800 dispenser was very expensive for them. So I was much lower price. Um, I think our pneumatic one was at 159 and the, the non vacuum one was at um, about 300. So it was much more affordable for them. How long did it take you to design the first model? It was a function of, uh, you know, I built a prototype using just the components and then I designed a box or cabinet that they would fit into. So it was before CAD CAM came along and it was basically mechanical drawing to do the parts. And then you get prototyped, um, machine shop would build a prototype and then you tweak the design from there and then you go into production. So um, it was probably a two or three month process to get the cabinets made and painted and designed. Okay, and so now we, we recently came out with a new line of dispensers. Um, what is different from the old ones compared to these new ones? So the new ones, we, um, we put a transformer in um, so we could go to low voltage and so we did a low, low voltage on the timer and low voltage to um, operate the valve and the foot pedal. So the advantage of having low voltages, you could have a, instead of a foot pedal, you could put a push button trigger on the syringe and that kind of reduced operator fatigue. Whereas the old ones, you had to step on a foot pedal repeatedly to you know, time your dispense. Where the new models, you just hold the syringe and press your finger to dispense. So it was less um, wear and tear on the operators and it was easier and faster and more accurate for them to dispense that way. Yeah, it so seems we, a lot more ergonomic. You know, it is because it's right in your hand versus, <laughs> exactly, versus stepping on a foot pedal. So that was the main driving force. Then we, um, we use the same valve, same high, re high reliable valve in the unit. Um, basically, we changed the electronics and added a transformer for a low voltage, and it's still got a digital timer um, and set up on it. So it's it was a actually, big, big improvement. It's actually more affordable than the old. And it was more affordable for people, yeah. So we took our high, highest end model, which was selling for 499 um, with all the improvements, this is the non-digital and we're selling the, the new model for, um, 199. So, wow. yeah, That's a lot good. of improvements over the years. And that was about three years ago, we came up with the new models. We've, uh, we've had a lot of reports from our customers that they've increased productivity, um, by, you know, 50% cut scrap down by 30%. So there's, a lot of cost savings and a lot of labor savings that can be done. So imagine if you're trying to put solder paste on a part, 
can put into a hand syringe and then squeeze it on each spot, but every dot would be different if you're trying to do a surface mount part versus a dispenser, you can set it once and then you can also do a stripe across a bunch of pads or put a small dot in each pad and the small, all the small dots are gonna be the same size. If you do it manually with a hand syringe, you're gonna get bigger spots, bigger dots, you're gonna have um, potentially shorts if the solder bridges between two pads because you put too much paste on, so. Um, and it so saves a ton of Saves a lot, yeah, of, a lot of money and time and, and troubleshooting and improves quality. Great. I think that's a good endpoint for today's discussion. I thank you for joining us again. You're welcome. And, um, if you guys have any comments, um, please leave them below or feel free to reach out to us and remember to subscribe, like, and hit the notification so you can stay updated on all of our soldering content. Thanks for watching. Great. Thank you, Sam. Have a good day. You too.